The FIA ETRC makes a stop at the mecca of French motorsports, here at Le Mans. Since 1923, this is where, usually in mid-June, the traditional 24-hour race takes place, but that is on the 13.6-kilometre-long Circuit de la Sarthe. The race trucks drive on the 4.2-kilometre-long Bugatti circuit. The weather looks dry, many truck racing fans have come to perhaps witness the decision of the title. Welcome to Le Mans and bienvenue au Mans. A look at the overall championship standing shows Jochen Hahn has a very big lead, 85 points ahead of Antonio Albafetti, and he could take the title this weekend, the sixth of his career. The atmosphere is fantastic. We've had a very successful season. We are able to lead all the qualifyings, almost won all of the races, the first races of the weekend. Therefore, have a good cushion for the championship right now, which, of course, relaxes me a little. The dominance of the five times ETRC champion this season was oppressive. At some point, Jochen Hahn claimed 11 pole positions and 11 race wins. I have learned to be successful, but also to lose, and that's what makes me strong at the end of the day. We're very proud of what we've accomplished this year. And then when somebody asks now if I'll become European champion, I answer yes. Why, if I were to lose it now, I would just beat myself up, I think, because everything would be pointless. I'd be very disappointed if it didn't work out now. There is no one else this year who would have deserved it when looking at the statistics say someone who we simply have to believe the strength is to be found in serenity. The composure of the five times champion doesn't come from nowhere. Jochen Hahn knows that he can rely on his team entirely, a sworn bunch. I guess that's the right way to describe the group. High noon at Le Mans, 12 o'clock on the Saturday. With a last cigarette ahead of the qualifying, Jochen Hahn is ready to go to work for title number six. One who is indispensable for Jochen Hahn, his wife, Diana. In each qualifying session, she intensely watches the timing screens, giving her husband all of the important information via radio. The first attempt of Jochen Hahn in Super Pole isn't perfect. Sascha Lentz is quicker, the German able to claim Saturday poles at Le Mans for the past two years. But the champion has one last attempt and fights back. Jochen Hahn is three hundredths of a second quicker than Sasha Lentz to claim his 12th pole position. The first step towards the title victory has been made. Le Mans is completely different, Le Mans different, is completely different from any other racetrack in the previous time practices. The old foxes know that, but I count Sasha to us old foxes by now. You can, if you do everything right, push for even more in the last lap of Super Pole, which I was able to do. I don't know how much faster I was, but I'm extremely proud. I don't know how many poles I've had this year, but it was an extremely close session, and now it's all about driving a good race. We're ready with all the possible pre-title decision fights for the European Truck Racing Championship. 18 rigs are lined up at the start, 11 laps ahead of us, and one man on pole position. That is Jochen Hahn. He is the championship favourite, and he's virtually unstoppable. Sasha Lentz lines up alongside him. He was not quite able to stay ahead of Hahn in Super Pole. Antonio Albafetti, third on the grid, second in the championship. He set his best time on the track right at the very end of the Super Pole session. Fourth, Adam Lachko, and he's hoping to push the Spaniard from second position in the championship. I have to keep uh, Adam behind, that's my, my main uh, goal, you know. Oh, of course, I will try to make some pressure in the front and the front guys, but I think it would be very difficult to, to be to win the race, you know. But you never know, everything can happen. It is time to unleash the race trucks. The start for race one. Lentz and Hahn on the front row. Behind them, Albafetti and Lachko. Then directly behind them, Hahn, Kurzim and Rodriguez. 
a little bit of rain at Le Mans doesn't make it any easier keeping the 1200 PS strong trucks on track up to the chicane ahead of the Dunlop Arc Jamie Anderson 8th behind him Norbert Kish and Terry Gibbon Gibbon loses the rear and spins Ollie James has to go through the gravel in avoidance it was to be expected that something would happen this is how it looks from on board with Irving Klein Nagelvoort, the Dutchman in the Scania. He passes them without a scratch and gains two places. The battles rage on all the way around the Bugatti circuit. Jochen Hahn leads the way ahead of Lentz, then Alba Fette. There's a battle behind with Hahn, Kurzib and Kish all battling. On board with Anderson, meanwhile, overtaking Luis Refuenko. They clatter their way side by side towards the end of the lap. Anderson wants his place back, but Refuenko stays ahead. Then there's Klein Nagelbord and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez, number 38, next in the queue. Last lap and the final two corners. Jochen Hahn drives to season of victory number 12. An incredible performance. Sasha Lentz takes second, Antonio Albafete bags third. There's delight at Team Hahn. It's another race win ahead of Sasha Lentz. You drive to the podium without one single scratch on the track. That's, of course, also confirmation of the entire year in which we were fast and strong. Of course, we also sometimes didn't have the luck at uh, some points of the season. This time they did have luck. Lentz is next to Jochen Hahn on the podium. So too Spaniard Antonio Albafetti. Jochen Hahn is a familiar picture for him, winner of the first race of the weekend. The seventh time out of seven possibilities. Unbelievable. A look at the results. Shane Britton, 8th. He wins the Grammar Cup class. Irving Klein-Nagelbort, 10th, claiming his first ETRC points of the season. Norbert Kish disqualified for disregarding the meatball flag, the black with the orange circle. That's because his engine produced too much smoke. And Jochen Hahn made another step towards the championship with a pole and a win. The third step is now to drive a great second race today and maybe even claim the title. That's something we tried to do, otherwise it will happen tomorrow. The second race has Shane Britton on pole position. The Brit, who was the Grammar Cup champion last year, is not easy to beat. Um, it would be nice to try and keep the lead. It would be difficult into the first two corners um, and then see how the race pans out. Next to Britton is the Portuguese driver, Jose Rodriguez. He's also won an ETRC race before. Third on the grid, Andre Curzin, who won the second race of last year's visit to Le Mans, next to Steffi Halm, who knows how to win races as well. The grandstands are full, the fans are excited for the start. Jochen Hahn needs to finish less than three places behind Antonio Albafetti, and he will win the championship. The stars have aligned well for Hahn. His only remaining opponent is directly ahead of him. Britain leads from Rodriguez, then Curzin. He's third, but dropping back a little on the run to turn one. On board with Adam Lachko, he makes contact with Steffi Halm, who gets sideways. It's a great save, though, by the German going through the Dunlop chicane. Hahn, Albafetti and Kurzim avoid the possible collision. They take a shortcut, which doesn't have any consequences for the trio. Albafetti third, Hahn fourth, everything going according to plan for the man in the blue and white Iveco number one. Until the moment the camera points at... René Reinert in the gravel. Norbert Kish is stationary as well, and the red flag is waved to stop the race. Kish trudges away. What happened? We look from on board Norbert Kish's truck. Kish next to Reinert. He's being pushed onto the grass from the German and therefore can't stop in time. The five-ton heavy truck crashes into the side of Reinert's rig, who spins around. I feel a kick from the left side. I think René moved over from the left to the right. He hit me. Uh, he pushed me into the into the grass on the right side just as we arrived to the braking zone, you know. So I was on the grass, I was trying to brake, you know, but it was not possible to brake. And everybody was making the turn in front of me and I just crashed into people there, you know. So 
for sure it wasn't my fault. That view of Kish validated with the onboard pictures of Jose Eduardo Rodriguez. Kish being pushed across by Reinert, then bad luck takes its turn. Even more visible is the crash from the perspective of Fabio Cittignola, the young teammate of Kish. Due to my manoeuvre, where I passed on the right, I missed my braking point a bit. It was, of course, extremely slippery as 15 trucks ahead of me had full water tanks. The track was wet and I braked and nothing happened. I slipped through and crashed into Lewis and Norway came over on the grass. He wasn't able to brake either. He was pushed across and crashed into me on my right. It was a chain reaction and it was over. Und Norby kam dann übers, übers Gras, konnte auch nicht bremsen, hat sich quergestellt und ist dann auch noch in, 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 in mich rechts rein, also war dann bumm bumm, von beiden Seiten relativ heftig und ja, dann war es vorbei. Luis Rothwenko in number 64 was also part of it and he missed out on the restart just like Reinert and Kiss. The second attempt at the front, Britain and Rodriguez. The Portuguese has Steffi Halm chasing him. The German in her orange and white Iveco, number 44, pushes hard and wants to overtake Jose Rodriguez right at the beginning. through the first corners. Halm shortens the way a little bit, but without any advantage worth mentioning. She even falls back a bit. Coming up to La Chapelle, turn four. Britain slips to the outside. Rodriguez goes on the inside and grabs the lead. Rodriguez leads behind him Curzin, whose camera shows that Britain in the purple truck, number 17, is third, and then it's Steffi Halm fourth. The German has a better line into turn five and better grip with her Goodyear tyres to claim third position. Lap two, Rodriguez locks up. He drifts out wide through the gravel. Curzim, Harm, Lachko and the rest say thanks and pass the Portuguese driver. The top three on lap five have taken off about three seconds ahead of Britain and his opponents now. Lachko damages his wheel cover, fighting with harm, attacking her for the first time. While the young Jose Eduardo Rodriguez serves a drive through penalty, he had the wrong grid position at the second attempt. Britain makes himself as wide as a tank, doesn't leave any options for Albafetti nor Hahn to overtake at the Kish Reinert corner. Jochen Hahn is next to Antonio Albafetti. Side by side they run. It's a nice attempt, but at the next turn, it's a left hander, so Albafetti is back through. The last couple of metres for the top three, almost overlapping as they head to the last corners. Kurzim just ahead. There's an attack from Adam Latchko on Steffi Hahn, but nothing changes. It's going to be a race win for Andre Kurzim. Kurzim, Halm and Lachko, the top three at Le Mans, while Jochen Hahn's sixth place is enough. Hahn claims the championship and the entire team is ecstatic. The emotions in the cockpit, well, a bit quiet. The sixth title for Jochen Hahn after 2011, 2012, 2013, 2016 and 2018, making him a record-breaking champion. He's got a lot to say post-race. With Antonio, I had a really good fight. I wanted to be in front of him when I win the title, but I wasn't. Well, to be fair, I didn't manage that, but it was a great race. When did you decide to think with your head and to stay behind him? Immediately, there is no point as I would have been able to come in three positions behind him. I just looked out for Sasha to stay and then it was fine. Fairness also on the podium. The three fighting drivers, Kurzim, Harm and Lachko, claiming their trophies. For Andre Kurzim, it's a repeat of last year's second race at Le Mans. A look at the results. Eighth, Jamie Anderson going one point up against the 10th of Ollie Janes in the Grammar Cup class. But still, the teammate of Adam Latchko, Ollie Janes, has a lead of 30 points. And for Andre Curzin, a small dream came true.
To be at the top here, it's a dream for everyone. And for me, that's the second time now to win a race on this track. It's an amazing feeling. And Le Mans wouldn't be Le Mans if there wasn't a crazy show for the fans. The most beautiful trucks in France are on track for more than two hours, right at the end of the day, right on each other's bumpers. The best part is that no fan would want to miss this parade. The grandstands are even fuller than during the race of the ETRC and the French Truck Championship. This is a true spectacle. Sunday is important for the Grammar Cup, the class for amateur race drivers, newcomers and race-by-race -race entrants. Ollie James leads the championship and he has done so since the first race weekend at Masano, even though he's only won three races in the category, but he has been banking points. Now we have uh, enough space to, to push to uh, get some points like we did in Zolder. Um, push very hard this weekend and uh, okay yes we need the reliability but you know the, the team here have been really good with us all year and uh, yeah fingers crossed uh, we, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be again on the top Luis Rafuenco is 30 points behind Jane second in the championship the Spaniard teammate to Alba Fetti won four races so far the 55-year-old is in his third year in the championship and has a lot of experience in rally marathons before this. Similar to Jamie Anderson, who was competing in the British Rally Championship before starting truck racing last year. Anderson is only one point behind Rothwenko, third in the class. I think, yes, we can close the gap, I think, if we use our head and we be sensible about it. Um, I think anything's possible. Um, it's just depending whether we can keep our mindset and keep pushing forward, really. Uh, every time we come to an event, we seem to get stronger, stronger and faster. Um, just sometimes we end up uh, not controlling me, and that's sometimes the biggest problem. Sunday afternoon, race three. Adam Latchko claims the best start position in a wet timed practice. The check is especially strong in wet conditions. And by the way, it's his first after the event in Mosh 2018. Next to Latchko on row one, Andre Kurzin, who keeps his distance, maybe also still on cloud nine after his victory on Saturday. Ollie James lines up seventh. Jamie Anderson is 11th. And in between the two British drivers, there's the Spaniard, Luis Rethwenko. He wants to take the battle to the two British drivers. Well, the truth is that a little bit overtaking both of them, leaving them well behind in the end. The track is pretty complicated, a lot of water on the moment, but if it dries, we can make a dry line, and if it rains a bit, we'll have some aquaplaning. But the main aim is to get ahead of both of those British drivers. The grandstands on Sunday just as full as Saturday. The field led by the Mercedes-Benz pace truck on the formation lap. After one lap under yellow. Race is underway. Adam Latchko already has a comfortable lead gap. Kurzim is playing it safe. Only now can people start to overtake. Looking back from Ollie Jane's truck. Behind him and Rafenko is Steffi Halm, who started eighth. On lap three, Alba Fetti passes Kurzim, getting ready to chase Adam Latchko. Five points are between the first and second places. Norbert Kish in the black truck goes to the inside next to Kurzim and makes an attempt. For almost half a lap, Kurzim and Kish run side by side. Kish seems to have passed. The last two corners head towards the start and finish line. But a small push from Kurzim and Kish takes the emergency exit. I'm a little bit disappointed in Andre because of that, because he was not giving me any space on the outside there. Um, so we touch a little bit, which was not big, you know, but uh, unfortunately for me, one of the steering arms broke. 
so I couldn't stay anymore. On lap nine, Jochen Hahn is close enough to Andre Kurzim. The new European champion goes to the inside and takes third position. Sasha Lentz goes with him and also passes Kurzim in number 11. On the last lap, Steffi Halm sixth, followed by Oli James, then Rathwenko and Anderson. Those the top three in the Grammar Cup. The leader, Adam Lachko, drives towards his first season win in a main race. He can handle the wet conditions the best. Behind him, Antonio Albacete. And Lachko shortens the gap between him and the Spaniard to just four points. I'm very happy because I think it's first victory in the season on the main race. And on the wet condition, I'm enjoying every time. The top three in the championship are together on the podium. Lachko ahead of Albafetti and Hahn. The results of the third race. Attentive observers will notice that Luis Rafenko is missing. He was eighth until the very end. The Spaniard passing the finish line 12th. The reason, there's a crash in front of him involving Anderson at the last corner. So Anderson is behind Rethwenko, seeing his chance. Maybe it was a little bit optimistic from the British driver, but this is how it all happened. Anderson to the inside line, Rethwenko turns in, and around he goes. What follows is maybe understandable, but still punished heavily. Rafenko fights to come close to Anderson on the outlap and pushes the British driver onto the grass. The revenge of the Spaniard receives a €5,000 suspended fine until the end of the season. Rafenko lucky not to be disqualified or get banned, perhaps. By the way, Anderson didn't receive a penalty for his actions against Rafenko. Race four has a fully British front row. Jamie Anderson on pole, Ollie Janes alongside him. Janes now 36 points ahead of Anderson and 40 ahead of Refrenko. The start. Anderson takes the lead ahead of Janes, then Halm and Kurzin, the two Germans. All that horsepower heads towards the chicane in front of the Dunlop Arch. On board with Adam Lachko, and you can see what's going on ahead. Oli James, though, is falling back. He drops to eighth place. He might have a problem. Somebody who does have dramas, Irving Klein Nagelvoort. That's the end for the Dutchman. On board with Rathwenko, 12th. He's got Shane Breton ahead of him. In front, Sitiniola and Reinert, and they make contact. It was a harsh manoeuvre for ninth position. And it means, yet again, there's a lot of damage. Same place a lap later. Lentz second attacks Anderson and overtakes the Brit in the white truck. Lentz claims the lead. Steffi Halm needs to wait for her chance. Jochen Hahn is fourth. He's pushing hard, although he's got Kurzem and Alba Fetti behind him. Hahn loses a rear mudguard after a little bit of contact from Kurzem. At the end of lap three, Jamie Anderson plays fair, giving enough racing room to Steffi Halm. She goes through, Jochen Hahn follows. And then Hahn lines up to make a move against Steffi Halm on lap six, heading towards the Dunlop Bridge. A small breaking mistake from Halm forces her wide. Jochen Hahn goes through into second place, chasing Sasha Lentz, who's managed to build up quite a gap. Then all of a sudden, flames come from the rear of the truck of Norbert Kish. The turbocharger has a small fire. It has gone again as the Hungarian stops his truck to interrupt the fuel supply. A very bad weekend for the 2014-2015 champion. My ambition to be a champion with the Mercedes is not over. Okay. Um, I still would like to do that. Um, I can't tell you how, because at the moment I don't see it. <laughs> but we keep working on it. Sasha Lentz claims the win at Le Mans with more than a 10-second advantage. Second is Jochen Hard, third Steffi Halm. 
three German racers on the podium. Jetzt kann ich endlich auch mal sagen, ich habe äh, bei 24 Now I can finally also gewonnen, say that I've won the 24 hours of Le Mans. It's amazing. I'm extremely happy for the team, our sponsors, for everyone saying you can do it. I'm just so happy. Now the question is, who will be able to point the winner's trophy to the sky? Daughter Kate does the honours. She might be training to follow in Steffi Halm's footsteps. The results of race four, 7th, 8th, 9th, Anderson, Refranco and Janes. It's staying dramatic in the Grammar Cup. Top three drivers in the class are also on the podium. Ollie Janes with an advantage. Finishing another weekend on top of the points in the Grammar Cup. An extended lead. We didn't think so at the end of the last weekend in Zolder. We thought uh, this would be where everyone would catch up, but finished the races. Loads of uh, other people got DNFs and crashed. Uh, but um, yeah, we did really well. And uh, yeah, it puts it all down to, I think, uh, Harama and uh, the double points race on Saturday morning, I think. Huge excitement in the European Track Racing Championship remains as we wait for the decision on who's second, Antonio Albafete or Adam Lachko. There's only a few days to rest because from Le Mans, we're heading straight to Harama, close to Madrid.